Hey guys, welcome to Food is Good. And today, this is gonna be a very exciting episode. A good friend of mine came up from Mobile, Alabama to talk to me about something that he's been working on for uh, a long time. <laughs> so I'm super excited about it. Uh, Eric Daniels, good friend of mine, I'll let him talk in a second. But today we're gonna be making some meals. And here's the deal, this is gonna be so amazing. We're gonna be doing pork tenderloin, really awesome. We're gonna also be, and I'll talk to you about where the tenderloin comes from. We're also gonna be making roasted root vegetables. Wow. Very good, very colorful, very healthy. And we're gonna be doing my favorite, I'm a salad and fish guy. So I'm gonna be doing, we're gonna be doing a spring mix, or spring salad with baby spring mix in it with some roasted goat cheese. So if you don't like goat cheese, more for me. You guys are gonna enjoy it. Thanks for joining us on Food is Good. So what we're gonna be doing, like I told you, we're gonna be doing pork tenderloin, we're gonna be doing roasted root vegetables and a salad with goat cheese in it. So right now what I have is, uh, the kind of root recipe we're gonna be using is, that didn't make sense, the kind of root vegetables we're gonna be using is beets, sweet potatoes. Please, for the love of God, do not call these yams. These are sweet potatoes, okay? Yams actually look more like, and you guys didn't even ask for this, yams actually look more like this from the continent of Africa. This is a sweet potato. This is really good. Not saying this isn't, because this is good also. But new potatoes, we're gonna put that in our root vegetables. And this right here, turnips. This is actually the turnip that's in the ground, and then the part that comes out of it is the green. So turnip greens. So we're gonna be cutting up some turnips, sweet potatoes, beets, and carrots. And every time I want to say carrots, I think of broccoli, and then, then I have to go B-R-O-C-C-O-L-I, because me, me and my wife, we have seven kids, right? And I'm sorry, I am completely off topic here, but uh, carrots, we're gonna be cutting up carrots, really good, and I can spell broccoli. So that's what we're gonna be working on, is roasted uh, root vegetables. But while I'm working on these root vegetables, Eric, tell the people out there how we met. Well, it all started back about 30 something years. Uh, we was at Crichton Elementary. Uh, a guy friend of mine named Reginald, you know, we was already together. And one day, you know, we was getting up to no good. Chip, getting in around the neighborhood. And uh, <laughs> we were throwing rocks <laughs> at a young lady that went to school with us. And hey. she got mad. She went home and she told her mom. And her mom came back the next day. So they separated the crew. You know, I was in uh, Mr. Walkman class. He was in Miss Kennedy class. Oh, my and, God. You know, <laughs> that was forever. He came into my classroom, and uh, one day he came into the back when I had on my Kango because I was a Ron DMC fan at the time. Oh, my God. That was funny, and I man. I think he was the Houdini man, but at the same Still time. Still is. Still is. <laughs> Still is. But at the same time, we, we Click. got together, and it's been up to no good. Up to no good. <laughs> then uh, I say that, but that's so true, man. So we met right. th almost 30 some years, actually closer to 35 years ago we met. Right. But, um, and, and have been good friends ever since. I obviously live in Cleveland, Tennessee. He lives down in Mobile, Alabama. Right. So we don't see as mu each other nearly as much. Uh, sometime, if I ever get a chance to go down to the Mardi Gras, because we all know Mardi Gras started in Mobile, Alabama, now right. New Orleans. Let's not get it twisted. Let's but anyway, it. with that said, we go down and I try to sneak by and see him during those times. But I remember this one call, phone call years ago. I'm gonna say probably about 15 years ago, I'm on my way to work. And he called me up and <laughs> see what happens when you don't have gloves on. <laughs> so, uh, he called me up. So whenever you're cutting your roasted root vegetables, make sure you have gloves on. If not, you're gonna get it all over your hand. So he calls me up and he said, see. I said, what's up, man? He said, I got this sauce that I've made and I've created, and I want you to try it. And I was like, you created a sauce? <laughs> like, get out of here, you didn't create no sauce. He said, I did. I said, okay, I'll tell you what, man. I'm all about some sauce. Tell me what it is, 
He said, I couldn't tell you what it is. Right. So you can't tell me what the sauce is. He said, I can't tell you what the sauce is, but I'll send you some and let you try it. So I said, okay, send me some, let me try it. So he sent this sauce up to me and guys, I'll be honest with you. I have tried to recreate that sauce, recreate that sauce. Oh really? I, but, I, but I couldn't figure out what's in it. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I couldn't figure out what's, what's in the sauce. So I said, man, can you send me some of it? And I'm gonna try it out on some of my products. So tell me about that sauce and tell me how you came up with it. And I'm gonna get this off my hand. Go ahead. Well, Caesar, man, this is a universal sauce. This sauce is great on everything. Oh my God. We use it pretty much on any kind of meat, any kind of dipping agent that you want to use, whether it's chicken nugget, fries, uh, whether it's um, chips. I mean, I had clientele said it goes great on get out of here. regular chips. Wow. But as far as uh, meats are concerned, uh -huh. you know, we use, it's great on turkey, ham, pork, pork tenderloin. Pork tenderloin? Oh yeah, very good. I got pork tenderloin today. Uh -oh. So we're gonna, we're gonna see. So what we're gonna do, so what else, tell me some more about the sauce, man. Well, the sauce is a award winner in Mo Mobile, Alabama. Really? Out of 25 teams of other people that had their own sauce, mm -hmm. This sauce came in first place, People's Choice. Wow. So I stand behind this product. It's very good. And then you'll be happy with it today. Really? No doubt. Okay. So what we're going to do, guys, I'm knocking out some root vegetables here. I'm obviously, I'm peeling them. Right. And then I'm going to take them and I'm going to saute them off. And then we're going to test out what he just said, because I like a good sauce. So we're going to see. So what I'm doing is right now, I'm going to take some of these vegetables right here. Cut them up for my root vegetables. When you're cutting up vegetables, you want to make sure you're cutting them up where they're about the same size. You don't want one to be bigger than the other because there again, they're not going to cook up even. So you want consistency when you're cooking them. So we've already knocked out the carrots. We've already knocked out the sweet potatoes. And then we're going to knock out a few potatoes right here. I like to use Yukon gold potatoes because I don't have to uh, peel them. The skin's really good. They've already been washed here. So I'm just going to go ahead and cut them so they're uniform, but I don't have to, they're not like an Idaho where you gotta peel the right. brown off of them. But I've even heard people say that they eat the skin off of their potatoes. So that's interesting. I've never done it. They must be from Florida <laughs> because <laughs> down in Mobile, we normally um, peel our potatoes, especially our Idaho brown potatoes. You know, so what I'm doing is I'm going ahead and cut the root vegetables and not go ahead and get these right here. So what I've done is I've already salted water. I've already salted water over here that we're gonna blanch these in. And I've also taken the liberty already to do up some more of them also. So we're gonna go ahead and get these things cooking. The water's already salted and we're gonna let those blanch off. Notice what I did not do was I did not mix the, uh, I didn't mix the beets in with the other ones, because if I would have mixed the beets in with the carrots, it would have turned everything in that water, I'm through with this cutting board, it would have taken every, turned everything in that water red. And that's not what we want. We call it with a bled on it. So right. that's not really what we want. So anyway, what we're gonna do now, now I heard you say it goes great on pork tenderloins. Absolutely. Let's knock it out. Let's do so it. I'm gonna grab some pork tenderloins right here. Really good pork tenderloin. I'm going to put it right here. Let me tell you a little bit about the pork tenderloin. So the pork tenderloin is kind of like the chicken tender of the pig. It comes from the inside rib part of the, of the pork, of the pig rather. So you have the pork loin and then you have the pork tenderloin. You can tell how small it is. It's, uh, it's a tenderloin, but it's also like in the name, very tender. You don't have to cook it as long. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and rinse my knife right here because you want to peel off some of this silver skin. So even though we're going to put, so you say this sauce right here is good. How, so what do, do I marinate it in it? What do I do with it? Do I cook it in it? Right. You can marinate it, but okay. at, the, at the end of the day, if you don't want to marinate it, you can also cook with the pork tenderloin, you okay. can put it in the oven, you can do it in, all, in a skillet. But so if I put it in the oven, so let me ask you a question. So if I put it in the oven, what do I do? So take me through the steps. So I'm going to be, what I'm going to do is I'm going to peel some of the silver lining off of it. Right. And I'm going to go ahead and get this on and get this hot first. Right. Do I want to put 
the sauce in it while I'm cooking it on the stove. No, go ahead and prepare your meat. Prepare the meat, okay. All right. Seasoning. Seasoning, okay. Salt, pepper, garlic, okay. All right. All right. So I'm gonna, so I'm gonna let you do this, so I'm gonna hit power. Okay. I'm gonna cut this on, one of the best things, man. Best things, I'm gonna cut it on to high, right there. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna put a little olive oil in it. Olive oil. Because I definitely want to, what I'm doing is guys, people like, and I've said this before and I say this a lot, people like brown, on their meat, they like it. You know, you nothing worse than getting a piece of chicken and it look like you boiled that chicken. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Nobody wants boiled chicken unless you're making chicken salad. So what I'm gonna do, that skillet's getting very hot. I'm gonna go ahead and start peeling off what we call a silver, the silver lining, the silver skin rather, not the silver lining, but the okay. silver skin off of it because it can be very tough. And you don't want that. If you're gonna spend the kind of money, and it's not terribly expensive, but if you're gonna spend money on a good piece of meat, you wanna go ahead and clean it up. And if that's a problem, you can always go to your butcher and ask him to clean it up for you. So that's what we're doing. We're just peeling off some of the silver, silver skin off of it. It's a nice piece of meat. Thank you, sir. It's gonna be really good, especially with that sauce, man, you're telling me about. So what I'm gonna do is peel some of this off right here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut it down just a little. Cut it down just a little. And then with this right here, I'm gonna go ahead, so, well, first of all, I'm gonna wash my hands. Right. <laughs> Cause I just finished messing with raw pork. Right here. This is really starting to smoke, so I'm gonna cut it down just a little. But what I'm gonna do now is, I'm gonna do a little salt, pepper, and garlic on this pork tenderloin. Now here's the question. I am seasoning up this meat right here. All right. Is that gonna interfere with the uh, with the sauce? Not at all. Really? It's gonna be great with the sauce after the seasoning. What kind of flavor would you say that sauce has on it? I would say it's a Caribbean type taste. Really? It's a unique taste. Hey man. Something you never had before and you really enjoy it. Really? So I'm gonna take it right here. My skillet's hot. You can hear it because when I put a little uh, salt in it, you can put a little flour in there. And if you hear starting to dance around a little, that means it's ready. You never want to put anything that you're sauteing or you're browning in a cold skillet. So I'm going to sit it right there. And you can actually hear that starting to sizzle okay. so it's ready. What I'm going to do in this process right here, I'm going to go ahead and brown it on all four sides. I'm not trying to cook it. I just want to brown the outside of it. Then I'm going to finish it off in the oven. So when I put it in the oven, Eric, I'm gonna let this meat, with the thickness of this meat right here, it probably needs to cook. I'm gonna say somewhere around, uh, probably about 15 minutes or so, well, maybe a little bit longer, but I'm gonna guess about 15 minutes because you can actually eat pork, and I'm sure you guys know this because you should. You can actually eat pork closer to medium. It doesn't have to be well done. I'm you a know, well done guy. Is he a well done guy? Okay, well. Uh, <laughs> The rest of us eat the pork medium. Because here's the deal, and here's the problem. I like pork well done too, I'll be honest with you. But here's the deal, when you cook it well done, you run the risk of it being dry or overcooking it. So that's why we say you can kind of cook it to medium. So right. what we're gonna do with that, we're gonna get that uh, pretty close to well done, pretty close to it. So it's not quite ready to flip yet. You're gonna, do about, you're gonna need about three and a half minutes on each side. While that's working, I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of this cutting board right here. Right. And I'm going, well, I'm gonna just go ahead and wipe off the cutting board, and then I'm gonna start on my, um, my root vegetables. I'm gonna keep working with those. It looks like the pork is coming along. It's browning up very nicely. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna give this to you and have you just flip it on the other side. So this side's good, this side's good. Go ahead and flip up the other side. Be careful, right. don't let that burn you. And while he's working on that, our root vegetables are coming along very nicely. We have, we've just blanched them off. Now some people may say, hey, we'll cut them and put them straight in the oven. I think if you do that, you run the risk of burning them on the outside before they're actually done on the inside. So what we're gonna do right now, we've already blanched the root vegetables. We've already combined them together in one pan. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a little olive oil and I'm gonna put a little olive oil in my skillet right here. Because at this point, I'm gonna take the root vegetables and I'm gonna put them in this right here. Put a little bit more olive oil, a little bit more salt. Nobody saw that coming, did they? Put a little bit more salt right here. And I'm gonna stick them in the oven and let them cook. 
right here. So we have our root vegetables in the oven. We have our pork tenderloin coming along very nicely over here. Next thing we're going to do, a couple of things we're going to do is, uh, I guess the very next thing we're going to do, we're going to take some French bread right here. And we're going to be cutting up some French bread because we're going to pair French bread with our goat cheese salad. So I'm just going to cut this right here and I'm going to cut it at an angle right here. Man, you ever eat salad uh, with goat cheese on it? Never. Never. Well, you're in for it today because that's what we're going to do. Goat cheese, huh? <laughs> goat cheese, yes. <Wow. laughs> yes, goat cheese. So we take that right there. I'm going to take this here. Put this here. Stick this back right here. I'm going to take that and... I am going to go with a, this right here, and I'm going to put a little, a little bit more olive oil right here on it so it don't stick, right here. How's that looking? Looking real good. Is it coming up good? Really good. It smells really good. All right, good. perfect. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to hit this with a little garlic, a little garlic on top of my... Um, French bread. Get it in the oven also. The oven is your friend. So while that's cooking in the oven, the pork looks really good. Yes, so at this is. point, we're going to take it and we're going to put it in the oven. I'm actually going to put it in the oven right in this pan right here. So this pork is probably cooked to about medium rare right now. We're going to bring this pork up to uh, well done for my good friend Eric. Does it have to be strained from grease? Strained from grease, that's a great question. No, we're just gonna stick it right in the oven while we cook this pork to well done. So we're gonna stick it in here. Yep. So that's cooking. So, be careful. So while my pork is in the oven cooking, my root vegetables are in the oven cooking, we're gonna start working on a salad. So I'm gonna take one of my salad bowls here. And what we're gonna do is I like using baby spring mix. It's really good, it's really tender, has a few different flavors in there, uh, lots of color. So I like those a lot. So we're gonna do that right here. So we got that going. I'm gonna take my goat cheese, which I almost forgot about. I'm gonna take my goat cheese and guess where it's going. So I should have just called this episode in the oven. <laughs> so we're gonna take the goat cheese and we're gonna put some of this goat cheese in the oven. So it's actually called roasted goat cheese. Goat cheese. Roasted goat cheese is really, really good. So I'm gonna take this, roast it off in the oven. Pretty much just melt it in the oven. Melt it in the oven. Hit it with a tad bit of salt, not a whole lot, because it can be a little salty. Hit it with some black pepper right here. Put it in the oven also. So now while that's in the oven cooking, our uh, pork's in the oven cooking, bread's in the oven cooking. <laughs> Got to run out of room in the oven. And the roasted root vegetables, guess what? They're in the oven too. So tell me something, man. So I heard you say that this sauce was in a contest down in Mobile. What was Absolutely. the name of the contest? The Wing Bowl. The Wing Bowl. The wing Bowl. So what do they do? Like, like lots of different people come from all around to do what? Right. Let's just say you and your family came to Mobile. Uh -huh. <clears throat> the, wing will, the Wing Bowl will be downtown. You pay 10 bucks. And once you come in the Wing Bowl, it's 25 different teams that have tents that's cooking wings. Wow. That you go to each individual tent. Try wings. At the end of the day, you vote for the best taste you had. So they came from all around. All around. And this sauce won. Number one, people's choice, first place. I'm excited about that. This is going to be really good. So my question is, is that so we can use it? Obviously, we can use it on wings. Absolutely. We can use it on pork. Right. Can we use it on salad? You said that's the women's number one choice. Really? Salad. Okay. Well, I'm gonna have to have my wife try that because that's oh, yeah, gonna be she amazing. Loves, she loves it. So what I'm gonna do is I got the goat cheese in the oven roasting. I'm gonna go ahead and check my pork ten my pork tenderloin. Pull it out right here. Wow, look at that. Here's the deal, guys. Whenever you cook any piece of meat, 
you don't want to cut right into it. When you put it out the, pull it out the oven, you want it to sit there and, and rest. And pretty much what that is, is when it's cooking in the oven, the juice is going all over the place and all of that. So when you let it rest, everything kind of settles back down. So when you cut it, the juices don't run out of it because that's the problem right there. That's another issue when people have tough meat, it's because especially with steaks or big pieces of meat like this, they've let it, uh, they've cut into it before it had a chance to rest. So the juices run out of it. Right. So it's gonna um, equate to a piece of dry meat. So uh, knowing it's half the battle. So we're gonna let that rest just a little Get my knife ready, right here. Now we're not trying to cook the goat cheese. We're just really just trying to heat it up just a little. So I'm gonna take it and check it. Check my bread here, which is almost ready. Goat cheese. Oh, that's good, that's on point, that's money. That's on point. It's really good. So while that's doing that, I'm gonna go ahead and cut into this meat right here. Oh, I forgot something. The whole reason. That's we're gonna right. take a little, and you didn't even say anything. Right. So we're gonna take some of this right here. Now at this point, the meat's almost done. Right. Now, do I wanna brush this and then stick it back in there? So uh, I just brush it. Oh, look at that. It does look Jeez, good. That's oh beautiful. my God. That's beautiful. So we're gonna do this here. We're brushing it. I'll be honest with you, man, I've never had it on pork before, so we're going to try this. So, that does look good. That Guys, and it good. smells, I don't know what's in this, it smells really, really good. <laughs> so, we're going to, is that enough or should I put more in there? That's enough, you want to put it back in the oven. I do want to put it back in the oven. Let's do at least three minutes. Three minutes in the oven, I can do Take it. Take it out and rebrush. I, oh, okay. So, we're almost wanting to put like a, a small kind of coat on it. Right. Not really a coat, but just kind of like a, yeah, a small coat. Just a little. I got you. So I'm going to stick it back in the oven just for a second. Stick it back in the oven. Three and when minutes it should stick to the meat. Okay. So you want to, okay. To so it's want to be kind of sticky. Right. I got you. And your second coat will be the Right thing. Okay. So what I'm going to do while that's working, I'm going to go ahead and check my roasted root vegetables because I know they're done. Okay, I need actually right here. Put this back in there. Uh, okay. Oh, this looks good, man. This looks really good. Yeah. So what I'm gonna do with here is. Wow. Yeah, it looks good. I'm not gonna lie. Looks really good. So we're gonna take this, stir this up a little. So with the roasted root vegetables, you're going to get a little tartness from the uh, turnips. You're going to get a little tartness, not really tart, but you're going to get a little sweetness from the, um, from the sweet potatoes that's in there. So I'm just going to take a plate over here, right here. Right here. I'm going to take a little of my salad right here. Guys, I'm all about, all about plating. People eat with their eyes first. So all about the plate presentation right there. Right. Actually, I'm gonna do another one. Do another one. Right here. Could you use iceberg lettuce? Could you use iceberg lettuce? Um, I like to use, um, there's so many thoughts that go through my head when you ask me, can we use iceberg lettuce? The answer to that is yes, you can definitely use iceberg lettuce. Uh, they say iceberg lettuce doesn't have uh, the nutritional value to it, but I'll tell you one good thing about using iceberg lettuce is the texture. You're gonna get more of a crunch with the iceberg lettuce. Now, instead of using iceberg, I probably use romaine. Right. Uh, Cause it's just as good and it's gonna have that same crunch to it. Uh, if I'm gonna use iceberg lettuce, I'm probably gonna use iceberg lettuce, maybe on like a smash burger or some you know, tacos or something like that where I shred it up. So anyway, I'm gonna take a little of my root vegetables right here. A little of my root vegetables. Looks really good. Guys, there's a lot of color. The beets add a lot of color to uh, this plate, or to those vegetables, rather. This is for him. <laughs> <laughs> this is for me. Right, so, anyway. So now should we pull the pork back out? Absolutely. Check it out? Okay, let's check. Absolutely. 
Okay. Wow, I mean, that looks good. This looks really good. It almost smells like a, I mean, a barbecue sauce. I mean, uh, am, am I even, am I even, am I even close to what's in it? <laughs> it's a it's mystery. It's, 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 it's a mystery. It's so he's not gonna tell me. I can give you that one. Okay, give I can it up. Okay, so here's the deal. Do I want to put it back in there? No. No. So we're good. We good. Okay. So since I just pulled it out the oven, be careful that pan's hot. Since I just pulled it out the oven, what I'm gonna do also now is um. Let it rest just a second. Right. So right here, I'm gonna put it here, and then we're gonna cut it open. My garlic bread is about ready. My goat cheese is about ready right here. I'm just gonna take a little of that warm goat cheese and put it right here on top of it. Right here, looks really good. There again, that's his. This is mine because I like goat cheese. So I'm gonna take this, put this here, get this out the way. Get this out of the way. Be careful, man. Maybe hot. So we got that in there, right here. I'm gonna check my. We're letting the star rest right now. We don't want to overcrowd it. So what we're doing is right now. I'm gonna take a little French bread, right here. Nice crunch to that. Put it right here. Put this one right here. Right That's here. Awesome presentation. Thank you, sir. Thank you. And then I'm gonna cut into this meat right here. We're gonna cut into it. How should I cut it? I mean, is there is there a certain way that you like yours? Okay. Negative. So what I I'm gonna want to eat that. You just want to eat. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut it real. I'm gonna cut it thin. You don't want a big thick piece of meat. Oh, it looks good, guys. It looks really, really good. Looks looks good. <laughs> Sometimes I have these ideas going through my mind. <laughs> have these ideas going through my mind that I have to catch myself. <laughs> like, because I was gonna give this, this is this is my good friend right here, and then this is mine. Hold up, hold up. <laughs> I'm joking. So here's what we're gonna do. This is right here. Right here. And actually, you can actually pick which one you want, man. It's fine. So should I put a little bit more? Let's do a little bit more. A little bit more sauce. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a little of this right here and I'm just gonna drizzle it right down the top right. of it. Hopefully <laughs> you enjoyed this episode right here with my good friend, Eric. This amazing mix right here, Eric Mystery Mix. Uh, you don't have to go home, but we're leaving. Right. Guys, thanks for watching. Food is good. We See you next eat. time. <laughs>